Greetings. Today we're going to be filling the sponsons on this Cyber Hobby 135th JS2 tank. And as you can see, we have some rather large holes in the chassis and superstructure of the hull. And these can be easily filled with a little bit of styrene and some filler, a little bit of patience and time, and it'll be all nicely covered up so that it looks good and on your presentation table or on display at a model show. Now you may be saying, saying to yourself this is going to be very hard and difficult and a very trying task, but I can assure you with some basic cutting and gluing skills, which you already know from building models, you can do a great job of covering this slight blemish on any AFV. Let's talk about tools and materials. For ease of editing on this video, I'm going to list all my tools and materials used on this project in my description section. But I will talk a little bit about some of the material I will be using. And it was going to come in the form of evergreen scale models, 0.75 millimeter and 0.25 millimeter styrene sheets, as well as 2.5 by 4.8 millimeter styrene uh, beams or sections, which I'll be using to support my sponsons in place, along with putty and scissors and clamps and glue and all sorts of things that we use in our day-to-day -day modeling projects. Because we do have to admit that every project, even filling sponsons, is going to be different from somebody else's sponson filling project, depending on the model and what tools you have. The first part of our project is gathering our measurements for the actual sponsons. And to do this, I will take the chassis and the upper hull and I'll put them together using tape and clamps as I am not ready to glue them just yet. And once they're clamped and taped, I can gather my, my data and apply that data onto the styrene. Now it's very important at this point to get as close as you can to the actual measurement. If there's any hesitation on the measurement, I always make your styrene cut a little bigger. That way if it is too big, you can always trim it as opposed to being too small and then you have to start over. Sponsons are usually horizontal pieces that we fill or apply to our all-terrain fighting vehicle. In this particular model kit that I'm doing, there's also a vertical element and it's about maybe two or three millimeters in depth and we're staring at it right here. So I took some styrene stripping and I needed to fill a very small section. Now for ease of visual aid, I made it really big. So you can see I'm throwing in some huge pieces of styrene onto that vertical element and filling in what I believe to be about, again, a two to one millimeter gap on the vertical piece along the chassis. So you can see there's a little bit of a notch where I put a black marker dot where that little gap is going to be showing. So I just want to fill that in. So I took my styrene sheets. I believe I used 0.25 millimeter as a support in the back and then I threw on a strip of 0.75 millimeter that will match right flush with the hull chassis of the tank and it looks really good and later on down the road we can fill that in with either a putty or weathering pigments depending on the situation. As we can see we have to do a little bit of trimming as my example is really large so I had to take a bit of a some marker and kind of measure out where the the front glacius plate of the upper hull is going to be landing onto the hull and make some cuts otherwise your your top hull is not going to fit flush with your hull at all and you're going to have a real mess so here you're going to, have to take your cutting tool and do a little bit of cutting and this is really wow there's a lot of stuff there so I did a lot of cutting on my fronts just to make sure that they align properly with my upper hull section 
and cut and grind and do what you need to do to, to get it to fit. And I'm just amazed at how large I made my example. It's really, really too big. But I think you see the point. Now, for the upper hull, I did have a little bit of a situation because the engineers who designed this model kit did not anticipate that you're going to be doing some scratch building. So where you see the arrows, I had to do a little bit of cutting and grinding just so that I can get a proper fit onto my model. And once that was done, we had ourselves a really good looking hull where everything matched and aligned just properly. So it's all closed up and nice and tight, and we are ready to move on with our horizontal responses, which are the horizontal elements of this filling project. Now we have our sponsons that were measured and now cut, and now they are temporarily placed in their, their positions and don't worry if the fit is not perfect when you first put it in. I probably did mine maybe three or four times where I had to do some trimming. Because again, I'm not using a lot of precision mathematics here. Maybe for you guys and gals out there, maybe got a lot of engineering or math skills that are really good, you can make it happen. But this can be a lot of trimming and cutting to get it in place. Not a big deal. And again, like I said earlier, always measure a little bit bigger if there's any doubts. To support my sponsons, I use my little beams and I just glued them in place as supports, structural supports that will hold them in place for the duration of this model. Hopefully it'll last a long time. And I use tape just to guide it in and it looks pretty good. And again, uh, the beams or supports I used, I just kind of eyeballed it. I didn't really use a whole lot of precision with my math. I should have, you know, I can't use calipers or any other tools that can enhance your precision abilities. Before gluing down the sponsons and the hull pieces together permanently, I want to take a few things into consideration, and one is going to be checking to make sure are there any visual blemishes in the area? So I'm looking for ejection pin marks. I am thinking about my IndyLink tracks and my track system, how I plan on applying that. Because once the hull is glued down, I will not be taking it off. So it's really important to make sure that, like in a game of chess, you're a few game pieces or turns ahead of yourself. So I filled in all my ejection pin marks I dropped in my sponsor and glued them in place. I noticed where I had to put some filler. The pencil tips will show you there's a few gaps. One right there, I just put in some uh, extra styrene stuff, just some debris, just to give my milliput putty something to support itself in. And also in the rear, I got a mild little gap right there. Not a big deal. Fill it in with some milliput. Check your alignments, make sure it looks pretty straight, it's all pretty flush and ready to go. Look at the vertical and horizontal elements and it looks pretty good. And from this point forward, it's really just a matter of standard filling. I used a milliput putty and puttied it up and I'll probably throw in a little bit more putty later. Because the area where I'm going to be sanding was a little bit tight and difficult to reach, I made some homemade sanding sticks, which I find quite convenient as I can cut certain angles that are specially cut and designed for the project at hand, and they came out pretty well. Just for good measure, I decided to take some Tumia putty and fill in the outer seams on my sponsons on both sides of the Joseph Stalin tank. On your project, Apply more putty as needed. I know with Tamiya putty it does tend to contract a bit, so two coats is usually works for the best. We have to remember that this whole project has been centered around the sponsons, and sadly it's going to be one of the least seen aspects of your model. Though with the holes going right through the sponson it would be quite noticeable. 
As a last resort, if you feel there's any blemishes in your sponsons, you can always throw in some pigments to help camouflage it. Thank you for watching this tutorial and I hope it encourages you to try out filling sponsons on any of those particular models that you may have in your stash. But moreover, I hope it encourages you to take a look at scratch building as it opens up many doors in this hobby. Again, thanks for watching, happy modeling, and I'll see you next time at Workbench Creations. Thank you.